Jesus Christ living in us, you are our gladness forever. You are the truth, the light. Hallelujah. Now as it was for all the ages to come. Jesus Christ, living in us, you are our gladness forever. You are the life for Christ. Hallelujah. One who abides in you forever shall live. Jesus Christ, living in us, you are our gladness forever. Jesus Christ, living in us, you are our gladness forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A hearty welcome to each of you, my dear brothers and sisters, as once again we are here for the Eucharist on the Feast of Saint Angela Merici. Uh, we pray to God, pray to Sister, uh, she was the founder of the Earth Alliance, so we pray to Sister Angela, Saint Angela, to bless each one of us with the same devotion which she had. Let's begin the sacrifice putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I failed and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the Virgin Saint Angela never fail to commend us to your compassion, Lord, we pray, that following the lessons of her charity and prudence, we may hold fast to your teaching, express it in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the reading? A reading from the second book of Samuel. After Nathan had spoken to David, King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. And this is instruction for mankind, O Lord God. And you established for yourself your people Israel to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, confirm forever the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, and do as you have spoken. And your name will be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. 
Now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Your responses. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Together. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. O Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, the oath he swore to the Lord, his vow to the strong one of Jacob. Your response. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. I will not enter my house nor go to the bed where I rest. I will give no sleep to my eyes, to my eyelids I will give no slumber, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the strong one of Jacob. Your response. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. The Lord swore an oath to David. He will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. Your response. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. If your sons hold fast to my covenant and my laws that I have taught them, their sons in turn shall sit on your throne from age to age. Your response. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place from age to age. Here have I chosen to dwell. Your response. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Kindly rise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given, from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the first reading from the book of second book of Samuel, we begun the second book of Samuel. The first one is Samuel and then the king, uh, the kingship of Saul, and then David takes his place. Now the second book carries on with the rule of David. And uh, the background to what we heard in the reading is that David is in a moment of prayer, a moment of uh, also inner peace. He reflected on how God had chosen him from being a small shepherd. Samuel had told him, you are chosen to be king. And, um, and he had defeated Goliath. Then Saul put him in charge of his uh, armies, etc. And then it, finally all the 12 tribes came and said, you be our king. And he was anointed king, first by Samuel, then again. And then David felt, uh, I'm living in such a beautiful palace. And God is just in a small tent over there. Since that, you know, the presence of God was seen in the Ark of the Covenant. The commandments which God gave were preserved over there, the word of God. And he says, therefore, he thought, I must build a house for God. I must build a big temple for God. And uh, the prophet Nathan was the one guiding him and then was the one who was bringing messages to him. So he told God, he prayed and go to God, I'm going to build. This is not fair that you who have given me this house are yourself living in a small house. Of course, 
he did not realize that really God owns everything. God is the creator of everything, doesn't need a house. And so the prophet Nathan tells him uh, the reading, that uh, the earlier reading, that uh, you, God does not want a house from you, but God is so happy with you that your house will be forever. Means your dynasty, mean the kingdom of David, which really is the kingdom of Jesus, no? because David is the son of David, is Jesus Christ. That's what really all that is leading on to Jesus. And in today's reading, we have David so happy once again, and he goes and prays to God. After Dathan tells him, you are not the one to build the house to God. God is taking care of you. And so he goes and he, profound, he has over there a prayer to God uh, before the Ark of the Covenant and says, first of all, an act of humility. Who am I? I am so small, but you have raised me so much. Act of worship. You are so great. You are everything. And finally, an uh, act of prayer, asking God, preserve my dynasty, preserve my kingdom, take care of your people. And sort of showing us how our own prayers should always be acts of humility, acts of worship, and then bringing our own needs before the Lord. Really a model of what a prayer should be. And in the gospel passage from Mark, we've got four sayings of our Lord. Let's take the first one. They're, these same sayings are found also in Matthew. That was uh, from which possibly uh, Mark is the uh, origin and Matthew scatters them at different places. But uh, taking the first one, it says, is a lamb brought to be put under a basket? So every lamp is to give light. You don't hide the lamp, don't hide the light. And the light is Jesus. So we call, therefore, to make Jesus known, to show the gospel of Jesus, the message of Jesus, the person of Jesus to the whole world, and show it how, by us being the lamps, by our own lives of what Jesus teaches us to be, you know, just, caring, loving, pure, our own life. We are the lamps. We are meant, all of us baptized people are meant to be lamps. The church is meant to be a lamp. We must make sure that the church is bright and this lamp shines brightly to transform the world and to give light to the world. Today is the Feast of Angela Marich. I must mention a word about her because uh, she's the founder of the Ursulines. Uh, she was born in 1474 near Brescia, uh, northern Italy. And uh, she was an uh, orphan at a young age. And soon her sister died. And so she was alone, prayed a great deal for her sister, her parents. And then she was conscious of the many girls were not being educated, were being at home. And she felt that that was the need of the time. So she got some other friends together and they began teaching uh, the girls in their own homes. She gathered this, this group was really had no vows, didn't have a habit, were not living in a community life. But she was the founder of really this group, uh, which came to be known as Ursulines. And therefore, she's the founder of the Ursulines and uh, also saw this great apostolate that uh, of the need of the time to help girls to grow. Pray to Angela to help us also open our eyes to see the needs of the times and by our lives also of service, be a light to the world. God bless you. Happy feast to all the Angelas. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness of this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine 
may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, blessed Angela Merici, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so to our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness. Bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. So with all the angels and saints we praise you. Without end we proclaim Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, Saint Angela Marici, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to turn a life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us, my sisters, my brothers, pray as one family to our Father in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin, and safe from all distress. Wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are, are yours now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. It's always a sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord, our God, that by the example of West Angela Merici, bearing in our body the death of Christ, we may strive to hold fast to you alone. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Your mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass Senate, let's go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God bless each one of you once again. Happy feast to all the Ursulites, uh, because your founders, uh, and then to and all the Angelas, and each one of us, of course, prepare ourselves now for the coming couple of days before we come to the end of the week. God bless you, and we see each other the day after tomorrow. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you 
for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. You give marvelous comrades to me. Oh